CBS News congressional correspondent Scott McFarlane and Nicole Killian, both standing by there on Capitol Hill for us. Um, Scott, I'll start with you. It seems as though things are moving on schedule. Um, talk to me about what we expect to take place here in the next few moments. You're going to go through a procedure that is truly following the letter of the rules. The Senate pro tem, that's Patty Murray from Washington, one of the most senior members of Congress, is going to be overseeing this, serving the role that the Chief Justice has served in impeachment trials involving former President Trump and historically before that. You'll also see the senators sitting as jurors as they convene formally this impeachment proceeding. What happens next is likely something you can measure by hours. It will not be measured by days. There's been every expectation in a sense from the Democrats on this who will be sitting as jurors here today and Democrats in leadership that this is something they're going to try to have dismissed today. They're going to give some space and some time, some bandwidth, Errol, to points of order and what may seem like a debate involving Republican senators as the afternoon goes on. But the destination is clear. This is going to be something that they move past, something that they dismiss or dispatch with almost certainly by the end of the day. And just so our viewers are crystal clear on this, Secretary Mayorkas has already been impeached by the House, the second sitting cabinet secretary um, to be impeached. Now the Senate takes its role in convening a trial. And on the bottom left of your screen, you're seeing Democratic Senator there, Chuck Schumer. Nicole, who should we be watching closely and, and what is most likely to unfold right now on the, the chamber floor? Well, you mentioned him, Leader Chuck Schumer. I mean, this is a Democratic-controlled Senate. Leader Chuck Schumer leads the Senate Democrats. He leads the Senate chamber. So, really, we will be watching to him for cues, in addition, of course, to uh, Senate President Pro Tem Patty Murray, who, of course, will be administering the oath for senators, at which point they will sign an oath book. And then, as I mentioned, we'll be looking to Leader Schumer to see how things proceed, as Scott referenced. We could have a trial or we could not have a trial, but only Leader Schumer kind of holds those cards. Earlier on the Senate floor, he mentioned the possibility of allowing for debate as to the merits of an impeachment trial if one is warranted. Granted, yes, that is the process, but he has made very clear that he does doesn't believe that impeachment is the vehicle to move forward uh, with the ch these charges against Secretary Mayorkas. He believes this is just a matter of policy differences and should be resolved quickly. But Senate Republicans, almost the entire Senate Republican conference, has called for this trial to proceed in full. So over the last 24 hours, there have been some discussions about at least allowing the opportunity to debate the merits of a trial, at which point a motion to to dismiss could be introduced or potentially a motion to table this a trial or move it to a trial committee. So those are a couple of the other options aside of just proceeding uh, with a full trial. So interesting. And, and Scott, let's remind viewers specifically on what grounds Secretary Mayorkas has been impeached. He appeared on CBS News today. He was on CBS Mornings and said, look, he's not really paying attention to this. He's going to continue to do his job as it relates to border security. But, but on what grounds did Republicans impeach him? Yeah, Article 1 of these impeachment articles against the Homeland Security Secretary accuses him of willfully and systematically failing to enforce immigration law. They've also alleged a breach of the public's trust, which they, th they say constitutes the high crime and misdemeanor threshold for this very provocative statement, the impeachment of a U.S. cabinet secretary. Democrats have responded unambiguously. They don't believe this is at all a high crime or misdemeanor, but they characterize it as a policy dispute, which to a degree in, in their argument is unprecedented to rise to the level of an impeachment. That's why they were unanimous in voting against these impeachment articles in the U.S. House. And you'll recall there were a few defectors among Republicans as well. This was not unanimous among House Republicans in approving this impeachment. But you're not going to see 
Alejandro Mayorkas in the Senate chamber. And based on the guidance we've been receiving, you're not going to see those House impeachment managers. Some of the names have become household names, like Marjorie Taylor Greene. You won't see them at the dais with video exhibits and evidence to present today. This is going to look and sound the part of a Senate debate, um, which runs the risk to a degree of losing the interest of Americans in short order. And uh, it's, it's just fascinating to me as we watch the, the floor of the Senate chamber there because it's interesting who is speaking to each other, what uh, positioning may be taking place before they're all sworn in and this gets underway. Nicole, this is only the second time in U.S. history a cabinet, sitting cabinet secretary, has been impeached. Why is it so rare? And, and ultimately, what do Republicans gain? Well, it is rare for a cabinet official, but as Leader Schumer pointed out earlier on the floor, and not so rare in terms of this process of impeachment. He noted that this is the third time in about four years, uh, technically, uh, potentially five, that uh, the Senate has had to go through this process of an impeachment trial because, of course, the last two were of former President Donald Trump, won over a phone call that was made to uh, Ukraine's President Vladimir Zelensky, the second, of course, of for the actions that took place here at the Capitol on January 6th. So this isn't anything new <laughs> for members of, of this Senate body, but obviously unprecedented in the sense of uh, this is the only the second time, as you mentioned, a cabinet official has been impeached by the House. Uh, so it is significant uh, from that standpoint, but again, not necessarily new territory for this U.S. Senate. And then, Nicole, I wonder if that then answers the second question as far as what Republicans gain by making a point out of Mayorkas's position on the southern border in an election year. Does this, for folks at home watching, water down the impact of an impeachment, almost retroactively, considering former President Trump went through this? Well, from Senate Republicans' position, you know, their main argument is, look, let's not change the precedent here. I mean, whether you talk about former presidents, former cabinet officials, uh, and others who have been through this process, there has typically been a trial. So that's really uh, what Republicans are arguing. Let the process play out as it should, as it has over the history of our union and in the history of this Congress. But leader Schumer, on the other hand, argues about the precedent that it may set in moving forward with the trial, because, again, in his view, these are just policy differences that congressional Republicans have with the secretary. And so what precedent does that set if you have an impeachment trial every time there is a point of disagreement over policy. So that really is likely the debate we may hear on the Senate floor if they move forward with debating the merits of this trial. And if viewers are just joining us, we are watching the Senate floor as the impeachment trial for Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas um, is about to get underway. He has already been impeached in the House. The Senate's role is to conduct a trial over that impeachment. Um, uh, Nicole Killian and Scott McFarlane are watching this all live with us and helping us understand each and every step. Nicole, you were just making a point as to why Republican senators think this is useful and valid. Um, we have some fresh sound from Iowa Senator Chuck Grassley, who just spoke to reporters um, for more on why, why Republicans think this is a, a good idea. Let's listen to that. And I think they want to avoid all the bad publicity that will come when we uh, point out or uh, how the prosecutors point out that he uh, is not enforcing the law at the border. We have an open border and we have drugs and crime, criminals coming in, and, and the people on the terrorist watch list. It's a danger to the country. It's a public safety issue that this administration is having an open border. There you have it. Pretty straightforward. Scott, the Republican senator there, saying that the Homeland Security Secretary isn't enforcing the law on the southern border. What, what uh, do you make of that? It's a pretty consistent argument they've been making over the past couple of months, including the House Republicans who approved these impeachment articles. What the Republican senators have also been arguing is that to keep proper form, there should be a trial, no matter the opinions one might have on the merits of these impeachment articles, that to be true to past precedent, there should be 
a trial. And they've been making that process argument in addition to the substantive argument they've been making about Secretary Mayorkas. And that really is a critical issue as this begins today. Democrats, no doubt, would like to have a bipartisan dismissal of these impeachment articles. They would like to bring over a Republican or two or more to join them in dismissing this. But to get there, to get one of those senators from the Republican conference who might vote to dismiss, they may have to allow some time and space to what appears to be debate. Mitt Romney of Utah, Lisa Murkowski of Alaska, those who have not closed the door on joining Democrats to dispatch of this, but they may want to see something presented to the American public before they do so to keep with proper form. That's what you're going to see play out over the next few hours. If there are negotiations that have taken place or negotiations that have been ongoing, it is to see how much time and space should we give this before we reach the inevitable destination and the inevitable conclusion that Alejandro Mayorkas will not be removed from office by the U.S. Senate controlled by Democrats. We understand that they are in the process now of taking attendance for the senators there. Uh, Scott McFarlane and Nicole Killian helping us understand how this impeachment trial may unfold. Nicole, there are a couple of options. It could be dismissed completely. Scott is speaking about this area of negotiation and compromise between Republicans and Democrats to allow some floor debate, allow some conversation without ultimately reaching the, the vote threshold to remove Mayorkas from office. How important considering all the other issues Congress needs to agree on when it comes to funding for Ukraine, Israel, bills coming from the House to the Senate. How key is this negotiation and this political dance we're witnessing? Well, it certainly does have implications. And to be clear, you know, the options are to dismiss the trial, to table it and move it to a committee or to move forward with a trial. And that is potentially what senators could debate, that path forward, what they think it should be. And again, debating the merits of the trial, but ultimately that is going to result in some type of vote to either dismiss, table, or proceed. So that's kind of what we are expecting to play out in some capacity. But politically speaking, uh, you know, this is a very tenuous moment. I mean, just yesterday, Secretary Mayorkas was was on Capitol Hill hours before the articles of impeachment were transmitted to the U.S. Senate for a budget hearing before the House Homeland Security Committee, which is the very committee that investigated Mayorkas that didn't allow him to testify, or there was some back and forth between the committee and Mayorkas as to whether or not he would testify in his own uh, impeachment proceedings that uh, the committee was having. But even in that hearing just yesterday, he had to uh, defend himself uh, against those uh, charges that we're preparing to be transmitted. So it is a very uh, interesting uh, political environment that we are in right now. But keep in mind, it's not just Senate Republicans that are arguing for this full trial. You also have House Republicans as well, including Speaker Johnson, who have called for a full trial. And just yesterday, I spoke with the chairman of the Homeland Security Committee, again, who initiated these proceedings against Secretary Mayorkas and asked him, how they might respond if the Senate moves to dismiss this. And, you know, he seemed to suggest that this could become a very a big political issue from the standpoint that, uh, in his view, if the Senate doesn't have time to take this up, if they can't handle the workload, then we will point that out, that they are not up to the task. And so I think that is a political argument that you might hear in this election year going forward. Secondly, I would point out you have Senate Republicans who have also suggested that if the leader does not move forward with a trial, that they may try to gum up the works in the Senate going forward on other legislative matters. And as you very well referenced, we are still waiting for Congress to act on foreign aid assistance to Israel, to Ukraine, to the Indo-Pacific. Yes, the Senate has already acted on that in a comprehensive national security supplemental package, but now the House has broken up those 
elements into separate pieces and they want to take these bills up separately later this week. Some of the text for that legislation was just released within the last hour or so. A standalone funding for Israel, standalone funding for Ukraine, standalone funding for the Indo-Pacific. And we're awaiting a fourth bill uh, as well, uh, which could be a funding mechanism for some of this foreign assistance. So uh, there is a lot that Congress has to get done. We already know we're in this era of divided government, uh, where really sometimes the wheels of government almost feel like they're grinding to a halt. And so certainly depending on the outcome of this trial, whether it happens or not, could impact that bigger legislative picture uh, going forward. And Nicole, that helps us understand why what we're watching, the Senate floor, is really not just about uh, Secretary Mayorkas and border security um, along the southern border. It is about congressional cooperation on every major issue. Uh, we understand the Senate has taken attendance. As soon as uh, the actual uh, process gets underway, we'll listen to that live. Scott, I want to bring you in on that topic of the potential for if Republicans are unhappy with, with, with this trial getting tabled or nudged to the side or not having enough time to debate the topic of border security and Secretary Mayorkas, what threats it poses, considering I believe there was a, a, a budget vote over the weekend. Um, talk to me about that and how things might change because of this. Yeah, th th there's an issue here. The U.S. Senate is paralyzed as long as it's doing these impeachment proceedings. It cannot tend to other business. The senators have to be in their seats. They can't be moving on on other matters. And there's quite a few other matters they'd like to tackle right now, a few pressing issues, which is what the U.S. House is unveiling today. Their new plan to fund Israel, to fund Ukraine, which the Biden administration said needed money at the end of 2023, the Indo-Pacific, and other matters in these bills. Now, how does the U.S. House pass these bills? Let's imagine for a minute, Errol, you got a piece of thread in one hand and like four or five different needles in the other one, and you got to get that thread to go through each one of those pinheads. That's what's going on here. They have to find a way to get support for Israel aid, which has a rather large tonnage of members behind it. Ukraine aid, where there are dozens, and I mean dozens of House Republicans who've argued they don't support more U.S. taxpayer money. The other matters include a provisional bill that could ban TikTok and all of these different constituencies behind all these different issues. They've got to find a pathway to get these things through a narrowly divided U.S. House where at least two members of the majority party are calling for the ouster of their own House Speaker. Tricky math, tricky stuff. There is one way to get through it. The U.S. Senate had passed a bill to do many of those things with an overwhelming bipartisan majority of 70 of the 100 U.S. senators. But the House Speaker has been loath to put that Senate bill on the floor because it may cost him his job, and he says it doesn't have the support it needs among Republicans, who too still hold the majority. So all of this balancing is happening outside the Senate chamber with some urgency, with some time pressure all the while. The short-term uh, political and legislative progress on Capitol Hill basically comes down to what we're all watching now as the Senate prepares to convene its trial over the impeachment of Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas. We've got Scott McFarlane and Nicole Killian there helping us understand the potential impact of what we're about to witness. But you all at home are like us. We don't know what's about to happen next, but we will bring it to you live. We will take a very short break at this moment as senators continue to sign the oath book. As soon as the process begins, we'll bring it back to you. But everyone stay right where you are. You're streaming CBS News. Mr. President, there's a lot to talk about. A lot to talk about. Does this carrier strike group stand ready? It's just incredible to see there's an active search and rescue operation going on 12 hours after this accident. The CBS Evening News with Nora O'Donnell. 
I had progressively fallen deeper into the world of online sports betting. The risk is the rush. What do you think is driving the spike in popularity? I think it's legality. If it's legal, I'm gonna use it. There are ways to bet when you are 18. We've created an epidemic of child gambling. You can't walk into a male dormitory in a college campus without sports betting happening. It's America's most neglected problem. I use sports betting as a way to escape, when in reality, I'm choosing self-destruction. Whatever I had left, it was gone. The purpose of the industry is to get you to play to extinction. And that means until all your money is gone. Stories start with the who, what, when, and where. But it's why it's important to you that matters most. Knowing what to ask is how you open the door to a deeper understanding. See you on Primetime, streaming free everywhere. An original documentary from CBS Reports. That desired farm is a wonderful place to raise children, and it still is. Promises broken. Black Americans have been the target of racism and discrimination pretty much from the time they acquired ownership in the land. Costing black farmers hundreds of billions in generational wealth. They did everything to make sure we were run off that land. But communities are uniting to continue the fight. Collective ownership is powerful to keep their land and their dreams alive. To watch my children play on land that we own means everything. To land this power. Most definitely. 40 Acres and a Mule, now streaming on the free CBS News app. People with developmental disabilities were once sequestered by the hundreds of thousands in institutions. Many of our fellow citizens are suffering tremendously because lack of attention, lack of imagination, lack of uh, adequate manpower. Disability activists have since torn down barriers blocking them from living at home or in the community. We conclude that Title II of the ADA requires states to provide community-based treatment for persons with mental disabilities. But of the 16,000 people who remain in state-operated institutions, half are in five states, and Illinois is one of them. I don't want to live in the institution. It makes me feel discriminated against. Do you think there are people living in institutions in Illinois that don't need to be living there? Yeah, because they're proving it as soon as they get out. Errol Barnett of the CBS Broadcast Center in New York. You are looking live at Capitol Hill, the Senate chamber floor, where the impeachment trial of Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas is set to begin at any moment after the House, which impeached uh, the sitting secretary, walked over the articles of impeachment, I think, just yesterday. We've got our congressional correspondents, Scott McFarlane and Nicole Killian, standing by and watching all of this unfold live. Nicole, I may have jumped the gun there and said that signed the oath book. But for those of you who know things specifically, where are we in the process right now? Well, right now, uh, what is happening is a quorum call, which I believe you referenced earlier, is more or less taking attendance, making sure all 100 senators are in the room. And what's kind of interesting about this is you know, there's not necessarily a sense of urgency as one might expect. I mean, just yesterday with the articles of impeachment, they were a little late getting them over, maybe by about 15 minutes here with respect to this uh, impeachment trial. You know, we started right on the dot at one, and yet they're still waiting for senators to roll in. And I think to a certain extent, if you're reading the tea leaves there, I, that may give you a sense of the enthusiasm level uh, potentially for of this trial, you know, just in talking to senators, both Democrat and Republican, do you think there should be a trial? A lot of them were just like, well, hey, we'll see, you know, very kind of laissez-faire, very casual about it. But obviously, this is a very serious and solemn process. And I think that just goes to show the political divide that we have seen between both parties, where really on the part of Senate Democrats, they simply see this as a stunt. Uh, you know, we have heard from the Department of Homeland Security dismiss these proceedings as baseless, but, and even some Senate Republicans as well have questioned uh, the process. And, you know, for instance, uh, senators like Mitt Romney have said at this juncture, based on what he's seen and heard, he does not think that, uh, 
you know, what Mayorkas has allegedly done rises to the level of high crimes and misdemeanors. So there has been some skepticism on the part of some uh, Senate Republicans. But that being said, you have others who do believe uh, that there is more there that you know, the, the situation at the U.S.-Mexico border should be litigated more vociferously through this trial so people understand what they believe is a dereliction of duty on the part of Secretary Mayorkas. For his part, Secretary Mayorkas, as we heard from on CBS Mornings, made very clear that he believes the responsibility really lies with Congress, not with respect to having this trial, but with respect to the policy. Policy. Keep in mind, he was a key negotiator uh, when we had that trio of senators, Senator Kirsten Sinema, Senator James Lankford, uh, Senator Chris Murphy, who negotiated a border compromise package that ultimately didn't really see the light of day uh, in this chamber. But he says it's incumbent on the U.S. Senate and the U.S. House, on Congress to act with respect to border policy, that that is the only way to fix the border uh, rather than to hold a trial like this, which, again, the Department of Homeland Security contends is really just designed to smear the secretary. And I think that's why some viewers may be confused when they hear the argument that border security needs to be dealt with by Congress because recent bipartisan efforts to do that have failed in the Republican-controlled House. Uh, Scott McFarlane, I want to bring you in on, on that question of where were the most recent efforts to come together on an agreement on fortifying uh, security at the southern border? There was this extended negotiation, both parties in the U.S. Senate, to find a compromise that both parties find acceptable to stiffen some border security policies, plus up the number of border agents and other investments in border security technology. But it just died on the vine, it died pretty quickly, within hours of its release after it was opposed by former President Trump and House Republican leadership. So at this point, they're back to the drawing boards in the U.S. House. They are truly releasing some proposal today that may have no pathway forward back in the U.S. Senate, which did the bipartisan work. So this is your classic impasse. Let's look at the optics, though, politically, of the other issue here, which is how resonant is this going to be, this moment, this proceeding, for Republicans that are trying to raise the prospect and the profile of the issue of border security. They have awaited this moment. They waited a couple months to transmit these impeachment articles with some promotion of their effort. And there is a risk this gets drowned out because they release these impeachment articles and set the stage for this Senate proceeding on the same day they are truly releasing legislation to fund Ukraine and fund Israel, which may water down the coverage of this event and water down the message. They're also doing so during a particularly busy week and on lots of other fronts. It doesn't have the spotlight to itself. So they have picked a week that is cluttered with other political stories and other political messages that does to a degree risk watering down what they're trying to do here today, which is raise the profile of an issue that they're confident serves them well this year and ahead of this election. And so, Nicole, how does then this strategy, I'm not sure why they waited, they impeached Mayor, the, Repub the Republicans in the House impeached Mayorkas in February, they walked over to the articles yesterday. How does the timing of this impact uh, Speaker Mike Johnson's efforts to maintain his seat, to get some positive coverage for moving the funding bills through separately, which was announced this morning, um, considering there is a challenge to his role led by uh, Republicans who are upset by his leadership? Yeah, well, it's very complicated. And, you know, in the sense of uh, these impeachment articles, part of the reason for that delay was the government needed to get funded, right? So there was the big uh, debate over that. And, and, you know, we remember, you know, those deadlines kept shifting in terms of funding the government on a longer term basis. So right. that's really what sucked up a lot of the oxygen to be able, how do you impeach someone if you don't have a functional government? So that really is what had to be handled first. 
That's also why we're now starting to see uh, some of this funding supplemental uh, come up again over in the House, because when it was sent over from the Senate, uh, there was a lot of opposition uh, by House Republicans. It looks like now uh, the Senate trial may officially get underway with Senate pro tem Patty Murray prepared to swear senators in. Let's take a listen. Yes, Nicole and Scott, stand by. Let's listen in. In the Senate, when sitting on impeachment trials, the hour of 1 o'clock p.m., having arrived and a quorum having been established, the Senate will proceed to consideration of the articles of impeachment against Alejandro N. Mayorkas, Secretary of Homeland Security. Majority Leader is recognized. At this time, pursuant to Rule 3 of the Senate Rules on Impeachment in the United States Constitution, the President pro tem emeritus, the Senator from Iowa, will now administer the oath to the President pro tem Patty Murray. Do you solemnly swear that in all things appertaining to the trial of impeachment of Alejandro N. Mayorkas, uh, Secretary of Homeland Security, now pending, you will do impartial justice according to the Constitution and laws, so help you God. I do. At this time, I will administer the oath to all senators in the chamber in conformance with the Article 1, Section 3, Clause 6 of the Constitution and the Senate's impeachment rules. Will all senators now stand and raise their right hands? Do you solemnly swear that in all things appertaining to the trial of the impeachment of Alejandro N. Mayorkas, Secretary of Homeland Security, now pending, you will do impartial justice according to the Constitution and laws, so help you God. The clerk will now call the names in groups of four. Senators will present themselves at the desk to sign the oath book. Ms. Baldwin, Mr. Barrasso, Mr. Bennett, Mrs. Blackburn. Mr. Blumenthal, Mr. Booker, Mr. Bozeman, Mr. Braun. We are watching the moment senators become jurors in the impeachment trial of Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas after he was impeached by the House in February. Our congressional correspondents Scott McFarlane and Nicole Killian are standing by there on Capitol Hill watching this with us live. Scott, uh, they're signing, they're being sworn in, they're signing uh, the oath book. What next? Well, there's going to be some back and forth between the minority and majority party, which really is the muscle memory of Congress, isn't it? Um, the negotiations that have been underway over the past 24 hours over what to do this afternoon involved what points of order will be allowed, what type of, for lack of a better term, debate will be permitted. 
and both parties have been pushing in opposite directions on that. Republicans want to have some time and space to make an argument before America on the floor. And Democrats are keen on shutting this down as quickly as possible. Some number of them have said, including to us, that allowing this too much time sets a dangerous precedent because they believe this is a policy dispute that is metastasized into an impeachment and shouldn't have. So they don't want to give it too much space. Um, but what you're going to see is senators. What you're going to hear from are senators. You're not going to hear from the prosecutors traditionally in an impeachment measure, which would be the House impeachment managers. We've seen that twice in recent years, haven't we? When former President Trump was impeached, you saw the impeachment managers make a case, make an argument, show exhibits show images of documents and show videos in some cases. That's not what's going to happen here. You're going to have senators talking, talking to each other. Um, we can also just note, it's a symbolic, but it's important. It's one of the few times we get to watch the U.S. Senate <laughs> operating on time. And I was just noting, it's interesting to see which senators are left-handed. I mean, all the small things that jump out to you at a moment like this where we see such detail. Nicole, considering senators, like folks in Congress, love a spotlight and a microphone and a moment to make their point, how much do we expect the senators uh, to speak and how much time to take, considering all that's at stake, not necessarily um, under just this trial, but all the other business that Congress needs to get through right now? Well, again, that is going to be up to Leader Schumer to uh, decide and to guide the chamber in terms of those next steps. Uh, once this oath book is signed, we do expect the Senate Sergeant at Arms to make a proclamation, at which point then the Senate kind of moves towards uh, organizational rules or setting organizational rules for this trial. And so that would be kind of that period where, again, if debate is going to be allowed on the merits of holding a trial, it might be within that window. Or, again, we could see the leader simply make a motion to dismiss. So that is what we will be watching for. You know, again, I think on the part of many senators, there has been some debate over whether it, they should have a debate because Leader Schumer made pretty clear. In fact, I think he said on the Senate floor earlier today, let's not kid ourselves about where this is going. I mean, again, he wants to squash this, resolve it as quickly as possible. So on the part of some Senate Republicans who want to move forward with a trial, some of them are a little wary of even entertaining the idea of debating the merits of it if ultimately Leader Schumer is going to move ahead with the same action in terms of trying to dismiss. It's like, what's the point of debating a trial if you're just going to dismiss it anyway? Um, so that is something uh, worth watching and worth considering. But uh, to Scott's earlier point, you know, the longer that this does continue, if they move forward with a trial and it continues over several days, it does kind of freeze their ability to uh, conduct a lot of legislative business because they have to be in the Senate chamber, they have to sit through the trial, and they can't really conduct any other business, although at times where there is not a trial, they can. Um, but that does potentially uh, slow things down considerably when you look at the House now potentially taking up this quartet of foreign aid packages, which is different than what the Senate passed in terms of that foreign aid supplemental assistance to Israel, to Ukraine, to the Indo-Pacific, because if the House passes something, individual bills, which is pretty much what they are proposing, ultimately that's going to have to come back to the Senate. So if they're in the middle of a trial, when might they take that up? Furthermore, they're all set to recess next week. So that's mm. another <laughs> issue with the calendar. Um, so this does have an impact, uh, whether or not this trial moves forward or not, on the legislative calendar as a whole. There's a lot connected to this. Uh, Scott, why did Speaker Johnson split those funding bills into four, essentially? I guess that's the new development this morning. What's his strategy? Let's keep in mind that that's a rhetorical question some of his members have asked, too. So there may be an imperfect answer to this, but it's clearly legislative strategy. He believes it's the best way to get the majority vote that has eluded him on some of these issues so far. He's got some very restive some very vocal members of the Republican conference who have been unequivocal that they do not support further aid for Ukraine, which means he would need some number, if not a tonnage, of Democratic votes to get that done. That's problematic for him politically. It's one of the reasons why his job is in jeopardy. His colleagues, at least some of them, think he's cutting way too many deals with Democrats. 
That's one issue. Israel funding may have a more critical mass of supporters, and he wants to get that through without tying it to the quagmire that might be Ukraine funding. It helps that move potentially more efficiently or gets it more votes maybe from his own party. But all of this seems to be so symmetrical in its own way from what the U.S. Senate did with its compromise. The tens of billions of dollars for Ukraine, that's part of it. The billions of dollars for Israel, that's part of it. Money for the Indochina region, that's part of it. It's almost like he's taken the ingredients out one at a time and put them separately on the table. Or for those who like five-star restaurants, it's like they're serving everything a la carte. But this seems to be the pathway and the trajectory he thinks is most likely to get something through. But nothing's certain to get through this U.S. House at this political moment. 2024 has been a year of the unexpected in the U.S. House and a year in which even the simplest blocking and tackling of governing has been incredibly difficult. That's why there have been so many near misses on government shutdowns and why so many things, procedural votes that are typically simple have died right there on the House floor. We're about to find out if this is the pathway forward, but it's noteworthy. And I think it's especially noteworthy today during a time of political acrimony that both parties have kept an open mind about what he's put on the floor or what he's about to put on the floor to fund Israel and Ukraine. And it's also why it's so important for us to watch how this unfolds, because it's not just about the impeachment trial itself. It is the other major business of the country that gets held up um, as this procedure unfolds. Nicole, I understand that it's unclear what kind of speeches we might hear from Senator Schumer, from Senator McConnell, um, but Senator Schumer for Democrats could just hold a simple vote and dismiss this. You had alluded to that being a potential outcome this afternoon. Uh, explain to me, I guess, why that wouldn't, uh, you know, in my view, I would, I would expect that to happen. Should we expect that to happen? And if not, what else is a, is a likely outcome, considering there needs to be some expression of cooperation here. Yeah, well, basically, in order to dismiss this trial, it just requires a simple majority. So if all Senate Democrats stick together, they can squash this pretty uh, quickly. But if just one Democrat defects, um, or independent for that matter, then obviously a Republican would be needed. And it's unclear, you know, if the parties are going to vote in, in unison here. So um, that is certainly a dynamic to watch in terms of the numbers, as it always is with any vote tally, but again, there had been the desire on the part of some Republicans to at least have some type of debate on the merits of holding this trial, because that's pretty much uh, the precedent that has been set in the U.S. Senate. There is typically a trial, and so many Senate Republicans don't want to set that precedent of just doing away with this without allowing some type of fair hearing, the charges against the secretary, and again, just even being able to debate the merits of moving forward with a trial if Senate Republicans or Senate Democrats, you know, want to dismiss of this. Uh, so I, I think on both sides, they're trying to tread carefully here, which is why Leader Schumer indicated uh, earlier today that he was willing to potentially allow a debate. And in order to do that, they would have to set what's called a time agreement, allow, you know, let's say three hours for debate or four hours, six hours, whatever that might be, um, to make sure anyone who wants to weigh in on this subject uh, has the opportunity. Um, so that, again, is kind of what we will be watching for once the senators finish signing the oath book. You saw Senator Mark Kelly there, so we're up to the K's, the middle of the alphabet. <laughs> um, <laughs> But, but, you know, that is the, the decision that they have to make. And as I mentioned, you know, once the Senate Sergeant at Arms makes this proclamation after they swear the oath book, that is where the Senate as a whole will organize and decide the next step forward. That's right. And we just don't know how many votes a motion to dismiss would receive. The Democrats' majority is so slim, it wouldn't take very many defectors to change the trajectory of what's happening here on the Senate chamber floor. Uh, Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas tells CBS News he's just going to do his job as the Senate right now during a trial will determine if he gets to keep that role as after he was impeached by the House and now a trial gets underway. We're watching senators become jurors 
in this process. Scott McFarlane, Nicole Killian at On Capitol Hill, helping us understand every moment of this. I'm at Studio 57 in New York. And we're going to take a very short break so we can all check our notes. We're moving down the alphabet. And in moments, we'll bring you updates from the impeachment trial of our Homeland Security Secretary, Alejandro Mayorkas. When you wake up in the morning, we want to be your go-to team. Nate has one of the quickest minds I've ever seen. Tony has a way of making people feel comfortable. Gail has this unbelievable knack to ask the question that you're asking at home. I've been told I could talk to a tree, and that's pretty much true. I don't go to work in the morning. I go for coffee with my two good friends, and we talk about the world. Your morning routine just got better. CBS Mornings, weekdays at 7. It didn't seem like anything could happen because nothing ever happens in East Palestine, but it did. Authorities released toxic fumes from five derailed train cars. Acute bronchitis due to chemical fumes. Did you ever have these problems before the derailment? No, ma'am. This neighborhood's not safe no more. We can assure the community that there's not vinyl chloride entering their communities. Then why are there so many people feeling these various symptoms of bloody noses or difficulty breathing and bronchitis? That's a hard question to answer. We're talking about one of the most blatant releases of a mixture of some of the most toxic chemicals that we've seen in America. I feel like now I have a duty to warn other communities. If my daughter has to watch me die of cancer, at least it saves someone else. This case. It's like a screenplay, something straight out of Hollywood. But it's not fiction. It's 48 hours. Human remains found this week. Four families shattered. There's no physical evidence. The mystery would haunt investigators for years. There's some questions that have to be asked and need to be answered. Get it, like a John Grisham novel. A gripping true crime original. 48 hours. Now streaming on the free CBS News app. This is CBS. of a lifetime. Seeing the Earth from space, it was so exhilarating. But the risks that come with the territory. There have been four fatal accidents. That's a 1% fatal accident rate. Might make you look before you launch. If you have one out of 100 airplanes falling out of the sky, we'd have a public crisis. Space Tourism, now streaming on the free CBS News app. I'm Errol Barnett at the CBS Broadcast Center in New York. You are looking live at the Senate chamber floor as senators become jurors for the impeachment trial of Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas. Uh, Scott McFarlane and Nicole Killian are on Capitol Hill uh, helping us understand every minute of what really impacts everyone in the country. Scott, I understand, based on what a producer there, uh, Laura Garrison, on the floor is sharing with us, that some senators are sharing notes, signing bits of paper. Um, there seems to be a pamphlet that's being passed around. What should we make of any early conversations or jockeying on the floor to get a sense of what might happen next? Oh, you're looking at 100 Americans who just got jury duty. <laughs> Welcome to the club. Um, there are many things you cannot do when you're on jury duty, especially in the unique circumstance of being a senator during an impeachment trial. They're not going to be able to bring in their laptops and do the things they want to do. Zoom interviews, Zoom meetings. They have to sit and listen and be attentive for a process that they all know is not headed towards a conviction. This is not going to be a trial with action. This may not be a trial at all. So there's an idleness 
that is probably going to overpower them in the next few minutes if it hasn't already. But there's also all this pressing business coming their way from the U.S. House. This new set of legislation for funding Ukraine, funding Israel, potentially banning TikTok. All of that's being queued up right now. Could come to a vote in the House by Saturday. And the Senate is idle as long as it's sitting as a jury. So a note passing to a degree is to be expected, if not encouraged. Scott, thank you for that. Nicole, we just saw uh, Republican Senator Marco Rubio. We just saw uh, Bernie, Senator Bernie Sanders uh, sign in. They're now becoming jurors in this process, so not too many more senators to go. Help us understand the next stage of this, which I understand will be uh, Democratic Senate leader Chuck Schumer taking the floor. Is that right? Or are there more procedural uh, points to hit? Well, likely we will see kind of more procedural action after this. Again, it's possible we will hear the Senate Sergeant of Arms make a proclamation once that oath book has been signed. But uh, furthermore, uh, it then comes down to how will this trial operate and run? And so that's where, you know, the Senate is expected to potentially consider some organizational uh, motions or uh, what's called, uh, you know, points of order or approval uh, of order. So it's possible that there could be a point of order made to perhaps move forward uh, with some type of debate, or we could see a point of order to move forward with a motion to dismiss or, again, to table this to a trial committee, which can happen uh, with impeachment trials, or they can decide that they want to proceed. Now, if they do proceed, uh, as we have noted, uh, the 11 House impeachment managers uh, do not appear to be in the Senate chamber, so we're not really expecting uh, a trial to get underway in full, in the sense of of arguments being presented uh, to the U.S. Senate, what they must first decide, again, is how they will organize this process and procedure going forward. And since Leader Chuck Schumer uh, is the leader of the U.S. Senate and of the Democratic majority, he will likely uh, kind of take the lead here in terms of determining the next steps. And what do we know about the impeachment managers and the role that we will witness them play here in the next few hours or so? Why is it key to keep an eye out for them and what might they do when they do arrive? Well, again, their role is largely complete. You know, they did their job yesterday in terms of transmitting or delivering those articles of impeachment, 11 House managers, impeachment managers in all, uh, that walked those articles uh, over to the U.S. Senate. Again, one of those articles being for the willful and systemic refusal to comply with the law. The second article being a breach of public trust uh, on the part of Department of Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas. Again, the Department of Homeland Security has dismissed these proceedings uh, as baseless in an attempt to smear the secretary, but uh, this largely stems from a year-long investigation that was conducted by the House Homeland Security Secretary uh, the Homeland Security uh, Committee into the secretary and his handling of the U.S.-Mexico border. So that's kind of what brought us to this moment. And don't forget that in the House, uh, when the secretary was impeached, the House had to hold two votes <laughs> to get to this point because there was one vote that failed because they did not have enough support. And Democratic Congressman Al Green, who was hospitalized at the time, had to run over, took an Uber over to the Capitol, uh, basically sinking the first uh, vote to impeach uh, Secretary, Al My uh, Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas, and then the House voted about a week or so later, uh, once they had a higher headcount. Uh, at the time, Majority Leader Steve Scalise had been out uh, recovering from blood cancer and had been receiving treatment. So as soon as he was uh, declared fully recovered, he rushed back to the Capitol, and that's when they held uh, this impeachment vote back in February that ultimately succeeded by just one vote uh, enabling uh, these articles of impeachment to move forward. And so, again, due to debate over government funding and making sure the government was funded, you know, transmitting those articles were put on hold for several weeks until we got to the point yesterday where those House impeachment managers delivered them. Now, in the course of a trial, 
if it were to move forward, it would look similar to, for instance, the impeachment trials that we saw with a former President Trump, where these impeachment managers will be serving as prosecutors, if you will, making the case for these articles of impeachment and presenting evidence from their year-long investigation as to why they believe that there was a dereliction of duty at the U.S.-Mexico border on the part of Secretary Mayorkas and why they believe it does rise to that level of an impeachable offense. So that is the scenario. If a trial moves forward, let's take a listen to the majority leader. Thank you, Nicole. We'll make the facts known to the chair so that the oath may be administered as soon as possible to the Senate, to the senator. The sergeant at arms will make the proclamation. Hear ye, hear ye, hear ye. All persons are commanded to keep silent under pain of imprisonment while the Senate of the United States is convened as a court of impeachment to consider the articles of impeachment against Alejandro N. Mayorkas, Secretary of Homeland Security. Madam President. Majority leaders recognize. In a moment, I will ask unanimous consent to allow for debate time to allow for Republicans to offer and have votes on trial resolutions, and allow for Republicans to offer and have votes on points of order. So, I ask unanimous consent that Senator Lee be recognized to offer a resolution that is the text of SRES 624, the full Senate trial, that Senator Cruz be recognized to offer a resolution that is the text of SRES 622, the trial committee that there then be up to 60 minutes of debate on the resolutions, concurrently and equally divided between the two leaders or their designees. And following the use or yielding back of that time, the Senate vote on or in relation to the resolutions in the order listed, with no amendments to the resolutions in order. Further, that following the disposition of the trial resolutions, if they are not agreed to, Senator Schumer or his designee be recognized to make a motion to dismiss the first article of impeachment, that the motion be subject to only seven points of order, that there be up to 60 minutes for debate concurrently and equally divided on the motion to dismiss and the points of order, and that following the use or yielding back of that time, the Senate vote in relation to the points of order in the order raised and the motion to dismiss. Further that if Senator Schumer or his designee makes a motion to dismiss the second article of impeachment, that the motion be subject to only one point of order, that there be up to 60 minutes for debate, concurrently and equally divided, on the motion to dismiss and the points of order, and that following the use or yielding back of that time, the Senate vote in relation to the points of order in the order raised and the motion to dismiss following that further, the disposition, further disposition of Article 2, the Senate vote on the motion to adjourn the Court of Impeachment sine die. Finally, that there be up to four minutes for debate equally divided between the two leaders or their designees prior to each roll call vote, all without intervening action or debate. Is there an objection? Madam President. Senator from Missouri. Reserving my right to object. To dismiss or table articles of impeachment against Secretary Mayorkas without a trial here today or in committee is an unprecedented move by Senator Schumer. Never before in the history of our republic has the Senate dismissed or tabled articles of impeachment when the impeached individual was alive and had not resigned. As Senator Schumer said in 2020, quote, a fair trial has witnesses, a fair trial has relevant documents as part of the record. A fair trial seeks the truth, nothing more, nothing less. I will not assist Senator Schumer in setting our Constitution ablaze and bulldozing 200 years of precedent. Therefore, I object. Madam President. Object objection is heard. Madam President, I raise a point of order that impeachment Article 1 does not allege conduct that rises to the level of a high crime or misdemeanor as required under Article 2, Section 4 of the United States Constitution, and is therefore unconstitutional. Uh, under the precedents and practices of the Senate, the Chair has no power or authority to pass on such a point of order. The Chair, therefore, under the precedents of the Senate, submits the question to the Senate. Is the point of order well taken? 
The Republican leader is recognized. Clerk will call the roll. Ms. Baldwin. All right, as expected, some early tussling there between Democrats and Republicans as the impeachment trial of uh, Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas gets underway after about, what, an hour of senators entering the room, uh, signing the oath book and being sworn in. They have now all become jurors in this significant impeachment trial. We saw Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer, the Democrat, begin by making uh, an argument that he effectively wanted to table or dismiss these articles of impeachment. I did also hear him reference time for debate to be split between Democrats and Republicans. And then we heard an objection from a Republican and a retort from Senator Schumer. Our congressional correspondent, Nicole Killian, is there watching all of this as well. Nicole, can you better help us understand what we just witnessed? Well, what we witnessed is pretty much what we previewed in the sense that uh, we knew that this next phase would be about how this trial should or shouldn't be organized. And so you heard Leader Schumer there uh, make a suggestion that he would allow two senators, uh, Senator Mike Lee of Utah, Senator uh, Ted Cruz of Texas, uh, to kind of present uh, resolutions uh, to the Senate, uh, enable time for debate for those. Uh, we believe those amendments would involve moving forward uh, with a full trial and then following that debate that they would then try to hold a vote on dismissing the first article of impeachment followed by the second article of impeachment. And so you heard uh, Leader Schumer there lay out some parameters not only for the debate but how many motions could be offered, how many points of order, uh, which, you know, is not worth uh, getting into the weeds on that, but just kind of laying out the guidelines for how uh, this debate uh, may proceed. And you heard that objection there from uh, Missouri Senator uh, Eric Schmidt uh, basically outlining some of the arguments that we discussed, that many Senate Republicans would like to see a full trial, but at the same time, they question the point of having a debate if Leader Schumer is going to move to dismiss this anyway. You also heard the senator argue that this would break with precedent of over 200 years to not move forward with a trial. But as we have previously discussed, uh, Leader Schumer made clear in his remarks that these charges against Mayorkas uh, don't rise to an impeachable offense and, in his view, are unconstitutional. So that is why he is moving to dismiss. His concern, of course, is setting the precedent of having a trial over a policy disagreement uh, when it comes to the border and potentially any other issues going forward, and that, you know, the Senate could be forced uh, into this position in the future every time that there is a policy disagreement. So. So that was a little bit of the discussion that you heard on the floor there. And, of course, uh, now they are in the process of taking a vote uh, as to how uh, they will proceed, uh, whether or not this objection uh, will be upheld uh, by the senator from Missouri or whether or not they will move forward with the plan that Leader Schumer outlined in terms of allowing some debate and ultimately this potential vote on a motion to dismiss.
And for viewers just joining us, it's just past 2 p.m. here on the East Coast. I'm Errol Barnett at the CBS Broadcast Center in New York. Nicole Killian is there on Capitol Hill as we watch the Senate trial, impeachment trial of Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas get underway. To your point, Nicole, we had been, you, myself, Scott McFarlane, spoke for about an hour before things got underway, anticipating this very moment in which both sides would need to come to an agreement in how to proceed. We just heard Senator Pat Murray, the Democrat from Washington, who's president pro tempore, say that it's not her place or position as chair of these proceedings to decide um, how to proceed. And then senators then have to get together and vote and huddle. We're watching this split screen huddle um, on the screen with us now. I see Senator Ted Cruz among other Republicans and uh, uh, the Republican leader Mitch McConnell there. Apart from Democrats who were on the other side of the room speaking to each other, we knew this was coming. We expected this to happen, Nicole. So what likely are they trying to figure out right now? Again, I think it's whether, you know, because obviously before Leader Schumer presented uh, this path forward, I mean, he did have to secure uh, some type of agreement uh, from Senate Republicans to see if this might be amenable. I mean, usually we see this in another form when the Senate takes up major pieces of legislation. They have to reach what is called a time agreement, and that is usually done before they move ahead with debate on the floor, uh, kind of similar to in the House, you know, where the House Rules Committee sets the rules for debate uh, on how a certain legislation will proceed. Obviously, we're not talking about legislation from the standpoint of impeachment, but usually, you know, you have to secure some type of agreement about the path forward before you present it uh, on the floor. So there could be some discussion there on the floor, uh, again, about how they want to move forward. I mean, when Leader Schumer said that he would allow Senators Cruz and Lee to present their resolutions, uh, that was likely uh, with the assumption that he had perhaps ahead of time secured an agreement with Senate Republican leadership that he was going to allow these two Republican senators uh, to move forward with their resolutions. And so this really comes down to Senate Republicans deciding if they want to go along with this plan or if they want to continue to object. Um, so as you know, the Senate is a deliberative body. And so this, uh, once again, is kind of a moment of deliberation as they determine the path forward. Would we not have expected Senators McConnell and Schumer to have communicated ahead of this or to have telegraphed perhaps some some limitations or boundaries that this could have continued within Possibly. And again, that is pretty standard uh, when they come to these uh, time agreements. But again, this is understanding that this process is a little different uh, in terms of impeachment than what we usually see uh, legislatively. But uh, we do know, of course, within the last 24 hours that there had been some, uh, you know, closed door discussions about the potential for allowing debate, how much time might be allowed uh, and the like. And so uh, up until this point, we kind of didn't know what those particulars might be. But again, we heard a leader, Schumer, uh, out, uh, a short time ago kind of outline that he would potentially uh, allow Senator Mike Lee to present a resolution and to allow time for debate on that. I think he said up to 60 minutes uh, yeah. on each resolution concurrently divided uh, between uh, the parties. Uh, the same for uh, Senator Ted Cruz in terms of him presenting a resolution. But regardless of these uh, resolutions, you also heard the leader make clear that he would then move for a motion to dismiss, which is what we expected because he has made crystal clear <laughs> that he wants this matter resolved quickly. And again, that's where there's a little split among some Senate Republicans because while, yes, many of them, the majority of them, would like to move forward with a trial, you know, some of them question this exercise of having a debate around it if the leader is going to try to squash this anyway. And we can see a little bit of movement as they break, uh, Republicans and Democrats breaking from their huddles at the moment. And Nicole, a reason we're watching this so closely is because the business of the country isn't being done. Remind us why the timing of this happening today specifically is significant and what other business and bills are not being considered while the Senate focuses on this impeachment trial. 
the business of the people are still getting done. And keep in mind, from the point of Senate Republicans, they want this trial to happen because they want to lay out to the American people what they believe is a failure at the U.S.-Mexico border. But again, you have Senate Democrats who feel this is nothing but a stunt and a waste of time, and that yes, they need to take up other legislative matters, uh, whether that is, you know, additional funding uh, for Israel, Ukraine, the Indo-Pacific, which again are measures the Senate has already considered, but now it has taken a different form in the House, where the Senate may have to reconsider that. You know, almost every day the Senate moves ahead with nominations for judges and the various administration officials. So again, that is work that kind of stalls out uh, in the process. And we know that the Senate has a very a lengthy agenda beyond that. Of course, now that we've gotten through government funding, you know, there is the matter of, for instance, uh, what to do uh, with TikTok. That was kind of a big talker before the Easter recess. We know the House, for instance, a uh, passed legislation may even uh, bring up additional legislation uh, potentially to ban the social media platform. And so, again, how the Senate moves forward on that type of legislation is something they can't do if they're in the middle of an impeachment trial. But this is all a part of their job, you know, whether it's impeachment, whether it is legislative functions. And so that is why there has been uh, this debate not only leading up to the trial, but one that we're witnessing on the House floor about the merits of moving forward with a trial and whether it should be considered, because some do view this as a very serious task, uh, while others feel, again, that this is just more of a political stunt. And you did say earlier, Nicole, that the Senate is a deliberative body and they will take their times to they will take their time to deliberate and discuss things among each other. There's only so much we can uh, pull from watching uh, the senators huddle and chat and walk uh, from place to place. Um, but as you mentioned, for Republicans, this is central. This is key. This is an issue they believe that voters should be aware of where they stand and how unhappy they are with President Biden's um, Homeland Security Secretary. Um, as we wait and watch, I, I'm guessing you don't have the answer to this question, but how much more time do you think it will take until they get back to the microphone and let us know what's happening? Well, you know, that is a tough one to answer because there are times where we have seen votes left open for hours. So hopefully it doesn't take them hours to reach a resolution and a conclusion here. But again, you know, this is, uh, you know, the people's government in action where we do see lawmakers oftentimes huddled on the floor uh, trying to reach agreement or, you know, come up with another arrangement or possible deal. It's just kind of what they do. So while it may seem like watching paint dry, <laughs> you know, there is a method uh, to the madness here. Um, and again, obviously, this is a very consequential step, whatever it may be. Again, if they decide to dismiss this trial outright, which really hasn't happened uh, before, or if they decide to proceed with one, which could potentially stall other legislative business. That's right. And as Nicole has, has so eloquently laid out, uh, the, the Democratic Senate leader, Chuck Schumer, opened this trial by giving options to Republicans to make their case, but then he wanted to table um, the articles of impeachment, to table or dismiss. And to that, Republican Senator Eric Schmidt basically said, absolutely not. I object. That's tantamount to, in his words, setting the Constitution ablaze. So from the jump, the two sides not close to an agreement, and that is what senators are debating and discussing now. Uh, our congressional correspondent, Nicole Killian, thank you so much for walking us through what we've been witnessing. But as we continue to monitor what will happen in the Senate, um, we'll take a very short break and bring you updates on this very important story throughout the afternoon. Coming up next for you all, we'll get you the latest information in the, from the war between Israel and Hamas in Gaza. Stay right there. You're with CBS News.
Mr. President, there's a lot to talk about. A lot to talk about. Does this carrier strike group stand ready? It's just incredible to see there's an active search and rescue operation going on 12 hours after this accident. The CBS Evening News with Nora O'Donnell. I had progressively fallen deeper into the world of online sports betting. The risk is the rush. What do you think is driving the spike in popularity? I think it's legality. If it's legal, I'm going to use it. There are ways to bet when you are 18. We've created an epidemic of child gambling. You can't walk into a male dormitory in a college campus without sports betting happening. It's America's most neglected problem. I use sports betting as a way to escape, when in reality, I'm choosing self-destruction. Whatever I had left, it was gone. The purpose of the industry is to get you to play to extinction. And that means until all your money is gone. Stories start with the who, what, when, and where. But it's why it's important to you that matters most. Knowing what to ask is how you open the door to a deeper understanding. See you on Primetime, streaming free everywhere. An original documentary from CBS Reports. That desired farm is a wonderful place to raise children, and it still is. Promises broken. Black Americans have been the target of racism and discrimination pretty much from the time they acquired ownership in the land. Costing black farmers hundreds of billions in generational wealth. They did everything to make sure we were run off that land. But communities are uniting to continue the fight. Collective ownership is powerful to keep their land and their dreams alive. To watch my children play on land that we own means everything. To land is power. Most definitely. 40 Acres and a Mule, now streaming on the free CBS News app. People with developmental disabilities were once sequestered by the hundreds of thousands in institutions. Many of our fellow citizens are suffering tremendously because lack of attention, lack of imagination, lack of uh, adequate manpower. Disability activists have since torn down barriers blocking them from living at home or in the community. We conclude that Title II of the ADA requires states to provide community-based treatment for persons with mental disabilities. But of the 16,000 people who remain in state-operated institutions, half are in five states, and Illinois is one of them. I don't want to live in the institution. It makes me feel discriminated against. Do you think there are people living in institutions in Illinois that don't need to be living there? Yeah, because they're proving it as soon as they get out. Israel's war cabinet wrapped its fifth meeting today as officials continue to weigh how to respond to Iran's historic attack. World leaders are worried Israel's response could further escalate tensions in the Middle East. For now, Western allies are hoping new economic sanctions against Iran will help limit potential retaliation. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky is calling on Western allies right now to send more aid, more air defense equipment. He made the ask after Russia launched missiles at a Ukrainian city about 95 miles northeast of the capital of Kyiv. You see it on this map. Officials say at least a dozen people are dead, many more are injured. President Zelensky said today's deadly Russian airstrike would not have happened if Kyiv's forces had, quote, sufficient air defense equipment. The missiles hit civilian buildings, including a hotel, apartments, hospital, and an education facility. Ukrainian officials accused Moscow of targeting civilians. The Kremlin continues to deny those allegations. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken is in Italy right now for the G7 Foreign Ministers Summit. Now, during the summit, Blinken will meet with his counterparts from Italy, Canada, France, Germany, Japan, the U.K., and the E.U.